Tech Yeah podcast. That's pretty good. Welcome to episode 28 of the Tech Yeah podcast. This is the internet's number one tech news and um, opinion just, podcast. You say it's the best podcast in the world. Okay. I was going to say featuring Bill and Tony, but yeah, just it best. is the best. Just the best podcast. The it's world. the best podcast in the world on any topic. Yeah, um, on any topic, any host, any platform, any medium, this is as good as it gets. But today we're going to talk about the big T. Oh yeah, the big T. <laughs> we're don't always we talking can, about technology. Yeah, I don't know if we can keep leading into the big T, but we'll, we'll try. <laughs> we'll, um, we'll, we're barely scratching the surface of the big T. So Bill, while we were walking down here, a funny thing happened. Yeah, a, a, a potentially um, dangerous situation arose bill was walking past uh, a different person in uh, tech yeah industries right mm -hmm. and that person said uh we'll call it a director level yeah did he say good morning or how was your weekend um he said hi oh he said hi and to me bill, and bill responded hey hello person hello. How, like what you, you asked i just him, i know i i just you? i just said i just said hello person no you asked him something you said like do you have a good weekend or something because i I he said that to me. Oh, he said that. Yeah. So I said, hi. And then he says, how was your weekend? Uh -huh. I turn around to answer. Oh, it was. Bleh. And then a vice president level person was walking by who he was directing that that question to. So, yeah, I mean, I'll say you are the uh, the vice president of tech. Yeah. Industries. So don't, right. don't feel. No, um, I, I don't feel like I was slighted based off of. Yeah, actually, you know. in, in tech yeah terms, that guy's actually below you. Correct. Clearly. Yeah. So don't worry too much about it. But I was going to tell a funny story. Uh, I might have told this before, but it's funny, so I'll tell it again. Uh, there was this one time I was at um, I was at Korean barbecue. It was a friend's birthday. So there's like 20 of us at a table, right? And uh, it was a very poppin' spot in Koreatown in Los Angeles. And if any of you have ever been to Koreatown on a Friday night in Los Angeles... It's madness. Like, it's just full of people. The City of Angels, don't you know? Yeah, it's like a club in there. Like, it's just loud music. It is, like, crowded everywhere. And uh, I need to use the restroom. So I got to use the restroom. There's a line. And so I'm standing in line for a while. And there's a gentleman in line in front of me. And we're just kind of talking, right? Like, not like, I mean, we're not tight. But, you know, we're making small talk about, wow, this place is so crowded. and The waiting for the bathroom small talk. Can't believe there's a line. And, um uh, you know, he was on, I was like, I was there for a birthday. He was from out of town. Uh, ha ha. It's his turn. He goes pee. And that's the end of our relationship. Right. So we finish our meal and we go outside and there's, you know, like I said, like 20 of us. So we're all waiting for our cars from the valet. If you don't know about LA, everything is valet. So it's not fancy. It's just the only way you can go to dinner. And uh, so we're all waiting for our cars. And uh, the dude from the bathroom walks up. And he's like, Hey. And I'm like, oh, hey, man, and uh, walks right past me to his group of friends standing behind <laughs> us. <laughs> and there's like 20 of us in our group. And they'll look at me like, what the fuck, man? And I'm just <laughs> <laughs> and I just like, I swear to God, we met in the bathroom. <laughs> and it's just like it doesn't get it. Just It just got so it was bad. It was it started bad. It ended bad. It, I was it was a, a joke. It's a terrible feeling. It's the worst feeling. It's, it's the most really, embarrassing really bad. feeling. I think it's I think the the worst part about it is you go from feeling good that someone is saying hi to you or acknowledging you to the exact opposite happening. Yeah. Where now you are alone, just on your own little island, everyone's passing right by you. Yeah, it's so positive for a minute, right? Yeah. You're just like, Oh, thanks. You know, it's like a so huge happy swing. to hear from you and they're just like embarrassment shame <laughs> <laughs> i just want to disappear right now please no and it's so funny because not only were you not getting acknowledged like you were like almost slighted you were actively ignored yeah actively yeah. like yeah. passed up yeah you're you're swinging on both ends of the spectrum of human emotion there <laughs> yeah it's real gross it's a real gross feeling yeah, it's bad yeah so it's bad it was uh it was pretty terrible nice well good story tone thank you i hope you i hope everyone enjoyed it yeah how was your weekend? What what was Tone Zone up to? I did nothing. Nice. It was great. It was one of the first weekends in a long time where I just had like zero on the schedule. Yeah. And uh, my roommates were out of town. 
So I was just like throwing in laundry and leave it in there all willy nilly. Love that. Yeah. 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 I don't think I turned a light on in the house all weekend. You know what I mean? That's good. That is, it's amazing what kind of, what, what things we do in our daily life that we almost do strictly when people are around because it'd be Mm -hmm. weird not to do it or weird to do it. Yeah, like wearing pants or folding things or like reusing plates or mm. turning lights on or whatever. That's true. If I was always alone, I would have one plate and one glass. And yeah, me all too. I would ever use. Yeah, I don't know why we need so many forks. Like I, I use the fork to eat. I'm using it. Yeah, rinse it off. Leave it in the sink. And yeah, then pull it out when you need. To I eat will again. wash it when I'm ready to use a fork again. Like yeah. I don't understand the need for for so much cutlery. Yeah, that's that's pretty funny. But yeah, uneventful weekend. Um, I literally did like nothing. I did some editing, um, but that's pretty much all I did that is relevant. I played a bunch of video games. I sat around, went for a couple of nice walks in my neighborhood. That's very good. Walking trying is to good walk for you. a lot more. Yeah. Um, the walk is very underrated. It is very underrated. It feel, it's nice. It's really nice to walk. So like Saturday, I walked to the grocery store. I walked to go get some lunch. I uh, walked to get a cup of coffee. You know, it's just, it's nice to kind of just stroll around your hood and, uh, you know, get a, a, a curbside view yeah. of your neighborhood. But that, that was pretty much it. What about you, Bill? I went flying a little bit, uh, flying on Thursday and flying on Sunday. Sunday's was notable for uh, tech reasons. Went into Hawthorne Airport, which is the site of um, Elon Musk's two biggest companies. Mm. So there's a Tesla factory there. And SpaceX is headquartered there. I think it's headquartered there. Maybe. I think so. I think it's their headquarters. I think it's the SpaceX headquarters. Um, but right next to LAX and the 105, 110 interchange. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was the first time I've been to at that airport. And flying into a new airport is is crazy. Is it fun? It's really fun. Um but they're like, my instructor's like, hey, you know, you're coming into a new airport. Like, if you want to go around, you know, that's that's always an option, which is which means just like coming in like you're going to land and then basically abort it and yeah. come back around because it's there's so many different variables that, you know, like the tower is really close to the runway, mm-hmm. which is weird looking. You got a freeway there. You've got all these tall, you know, the the factory um, warehouses and everything are right next to the to the runway. So it has a weird look that if you're not used to it, it could be disorienting and you might come in high, you might come in low or, you know, just seeing it for the first time is is interesting. Yeah, that's cool. You should I, I would like to see you land in San Diego. I well, that's I'm I plan on going to San Diego a lot. It's always been like I mean, even as someone who's never flown an airplane but lived in San Diego, like the approach is always so crazy. Oh, you're talking about Lindbergh Field. Lindbergh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because the approach is always so crazy because you're coming over downtown like yeah, super steep, you know, and like I mean, when you're on the ground, it looks like these planes are literally like gonna touch the ground. Yeah, they're so close. Yeah, Uh, I have to check into that because it's a class Bravo airport. And there might be like landing fees involved in uh, that, like LAX. Like you can't just go land at LAX. I'll split it with you. It's like a hundred and fifty bucks just to touch down at LAX. That's not that bad. Just in fees. It's not bad to for to say you're going to do it. I'll split it with you and we'll put it on the podcast. Love video it. Feed. Yeah, All right. that'd be cool. But I have to check because it's not always the case. There might not be a fee there because it is a smaller Bravo airport. But yeah, it's not like LAX. That's for sure. No. But it is definitely not the craziest approach. Um, in the area by far. I saw you did some cruising this weekend too. Yeah, on the gram, I was. Yeah. I saw. I'm like, oh, this dude's cruising. Yeah, dude, we went cruising in the little Alpha. You look was, too big for the car. I'll be honest. I am too big for the car for sure. Your knees are like above the steering wheel. Yeah, but I will say that it is an Italian car, and they have that is the Italian driving uh, position. The, the stand steering wheel is in your lap, and you have to have your knees apart in order to drive the thing. Every Italian car I've ever driven all have the same exact driving position except for like newer maseratis they they're a little bit more kind of normal but although newer maseratis aren't really italian are they no they are aren't they like partially owned by like general motors or something no their own uh uh, fiat owns chrysler oh yeah um but like every ferrari every lamborghini every uh, older maseratis they all have the same like the steering wheel is in your lap it's weird. There's always a quirky driving position. Yeah, thing. It's weird. What's up with Maserati these days? I feel like they're so much more popular now. Like I feel like they've made a big push into the yeah. states, and yeah, 
Yeah, like one of my friends has a Maserati, and it's it's, it's like probably a Ghibli, right? Yeah, it's a nice car. Yep, smaller four door V six turbo. Yeah, it's fun to drive. Yep, yeah they they've taken out a lot of the um the fun stuff about them yeah. in, in the past, the like quirky stuff. Yeah, like the the older Quattroporte, um, not the original seventies one, but the the you know late. Uh, or 2000 I think it was 2003 when they came out but it was basically a four-door Ferrari at that point mm-hmm. um, it had a Ferrari engine in it paddle shifters I mean it, it was a quirky weird you know electronics didn't really work looked really cool sounded like a supercar and now they're turbocharged and quiet and kind of they're pretty but they're just kind of normal. kind of mundane yeah which is why they're selling more which is kind of unfortunate. Oh, like they can build them at a affordable rate too. Right? Yeah, well, and just people are buying. It. People aren't interested in quirky, weird things. They want BMWs, Mercedes. They want it to run. They want it to look whatever. And, yeah, I would and say it's go. on par with like a Mercedes. Yeah, car. I mean that's that's yeah. what they're trying to go for, and they've never even come close to the volume of of any of those companies. Um, but you like just as an enthusiast of anything. You know, there is a difference between what you like as an enthusiast versus what has mass appeal, whether it's movies or video games or whatever. There's always like that niche where the purists tend to like this, but that's not really the marketable thing. Yeah. And that's been the same for Maserati. The Fiat group just needed something that sold in that category. It's funny, like the only industry by industry I think of, like, because I feel like that comes up a lot. And I feel like the only industry that's really embraced it is cameras because they have like prosumer grade cameras. Yeah. Right. But that's yeah. really is what it is. It's like, a, right. you know, you're not a race car driver, but you're not like, you know, grocery getter. Like you want some of those features of like a, a race car, or like a pro grade vehicle. But uh, but you're not going to go all out. Right. And get like a GT4 or something. Right. So you yeah. like. You have to get this kind of like mid range, like prosumer style vehicle, right? Yeah, it's just brand. I mean, it's just a brand. Yeah. And it's just branding. I'm just kind of saying where it fits in the market more so than how, you know, it's yeah. sold. But yeah, I, I agree. And I, I was thinking about that in, in a different industry too, like last week. And I was like, well, there's no word for that tier of, you know, thing in this, in this industry. But uh, yeah, Italian cars, I feel like are always like that, that car. You know what I mean? Well, I guess they're pure sports cars too but um. well they just it's it's very weird looking at it from an industrial standpoint Mm -hmm. is italy is ancient they're just thousands year old uh culture and you have this this like weird industrial boom that happened specifically in northern italy if you look at modena all of the major supercar manufacturers for a long time were based in like a 30 mile little ring Mm -hmm. you've got maserati pagani ferrari alfa romeo uh, Lamborghini are all just right, right there. And I mean, it's kind of like Silicon Valley where f- whatever circumstantial reasons line up where this just happens to be the hotbed of guys that like to work on, you know, mechanical things, plus this influx of style and art from Milan and these, you know, Florence is very mm-hmm. art culture. Um, and it just kind of bred this specific type of machine to be built in this specific location um and and like all italian cars have had that aspect of um utilitarianism but also style for the sake of style it kind of goes to show that like even historically the things we do are so much influenced by what the people around us are doing you know what i mean like you know i'm sure those small um kind of like you know, homes of like, you know, like Detroit or you know, like you're saying with the Italian cars, right? It's like there were cars, a small group started to kind of tweak on their cars and then they kind of drew in more people of that ilk to that area. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, you know, you have, you know, I'm sure those are all somebody's names like Ferrari. Yeah. You know what I they're mean? All like names, yeah. all those families kind of were like yeah. all the dudes doing the cars together and yeah. all, and now they're all making all those cars. Right? Yeah. It's, Lancia and Fiat and Fiat and Alpha are the only ones that aren't people's names. Technically. And they're the only ones that are kind of like 
consumer level. They're cars. more mainstream, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alpha is an exception where it's Romeo is actually the name of the guy that continued it. But anyway, yeah, I mean, it happens in all, I mean, even like winemaking, you know, you have like a concentration of winemakers in a particular region because it's good for making wine, mm -hmm. but it also breeds a different style within those. Like Napa yeah. growers are different than Paso Robles are different than French are different than Argentinian. Like they all have you know, they're all based there for... Don't forget about Temecula, the, tr the true one. Temecula, country. too. Okay. Yeah, good Lord. How dare you? Yeah. <laughs> How dare you? They haven't really have... They don't have a, their own identity yet. No, they don't. Uh, Paso Robles is, is like a little bit more uh, forward-thinking and experimental. Yeah, Temecula is just the poor man's uh, <laughs> Napa, right? Yeah, yeah Napa is just kind of like, like people that aren't as traditional that were in France and coming over. But anyway, it's ridiculous yeah. for people that like wine, but also like chilies. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, so <laughs> they're going to order this at their next dinner at yeah. Applebee's. Yeah. Oh, we went to this winery. We'll have some of that. Yeah. Can I get the Ponte Pinot? Yeah. And an awesome blossom, please. Yeah, I would like, a, I would like some Wilson Creek <laughs> almond champagne with my. Yeah. And your finest $20 sirloin, please, yeah, sir. Yikes. Um, That's but yeah, kind of, uh, I, I enjoy that about my little alpha, um, because it, it is like, it has a personality based on those things and the personality is different than like an older German car or a Japanese car or something when they're, you have distinct, uh, personalities built into these vehicles that are reflections of the culture, um, you know. Japanese people tend to be very detailed oriented. It's a very detail oriented culture. Um, you know, Germans very precise. Italians very flamboyant and artistic. Uh, British are very uh, traditional, and all of those kind of you know big cultural umbrellas are reflected in their cars, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah, it is cool. All right, before we get into the heavy story, I got a, a little fun thing, and it kind of relates. I guess, to culture. Uh, Bill, what do you think about K-pop? <laughs> um, I know, is Gundam style K-pop? It is. Okay. All it's right. not Gundam style. <laughs> Whatever. It's like Gangnam, I think. Gangnam style? Gangnam. Like, Gangnam? It's the name of a place um, in Korea. It's like a neighborhood in Seoul. So that's the only song I'm aware of. That's the only song you're aware of? Really? Culturally, I'm aware of... Of its existence. Well, then this is that. That's kind of why I want to bring this story. Okay, because it's that's the extent of my knowledge. Like I don't. I'm not. That's that's it. That this is, is going to show you how out of touch with how the world actually works. Now, I, I will say even that we should we should clarify that K-pop is Korean pop. Korean mm -hmm. pop music, referring to music, Korean popular music. Uh, the story implies that more people know about it than than you think. Uh, this is from Christine Fisher and Engadget, uh, but this is pretty much a pretty straightforward story. Uh, Blackpink, which is a K-pop group, a girl group of four young ladies, is... Uh, Blackpink? Blackpink is the name of the band. Kill This Love is the name of the song, is breaking YouTube records. The music video reached 100 million YouTube views in less than three days. Uh, reached 56.7 million YouTube views uh, on its first day. 100 million in less than three days. It's the fastest any music video have, have, has ever reached either milestone and it makes it the biggest music video debut in YouTube history, unseating Ariana Grande. Have you seen that video? No, that's why I have it right here. Okay, and am, am I? I'm going to be cynical and say that these four young ladies are probably pretty easy on the eyes. I mean, they're cute, but they're like. Is this a sexy video? No, it's, I, I, it's, no. it's not the sexy. The draw isn't that it's like. Interesting. Okay, because I went the cynical internet route going, there's got to be these these four young ladies must be hotties. No, actually, people really, I mean, they're cute, but people really love K-pop. It's just and, the music? And people really wow. love Blackpink. Like, hmm. um, I, I actually heard about them first in a lot of stories about, like, uh, it was actually like, a, I can't remember where I saw it, but. They were talking about how Blackpink is like really popular with the LGBTQ community just because they're like, I don't know. I don't think they directly address it. Maybe they do, but I think they're just so non, um, you know, the music it's is not so mainstream yet. It is. It, well, counterculture a little bit. It's the biggest video of all time. So obviously it's mainstream. 
I think there's a certain level of like relatability to things that aren't um, things that aren't domestic because um, it's it's there's no politics involved. You know what I mean? Like in some ways, like there's a, a way you can divorce yourself from the politics of these people and what they do. Cause you know, that I'm sure that, you know, what people embrace is they're like, Oh, we're songs about having fun or love or, you know what I mean? Like you don't really get into the cultural ramifications cause you don't really understand them. Um, but this is the biggest music video ever. Bigger than thriller. Bigger. Well, dude, in YouTube history, dude. Here, do you want to see some of it? I'm, we have to mute this, right? I don't care. It'll be fine. I will say their music is very... Um, and it won't okay. be very loud. I will say their music reminds me of... Um, kind of like America Electronic Pop from like, it's like a year or two ago. Minaj, Nicki Minaj. That's what I mean. Your, yeah. your, re, your grandes. Yeah, the biggest songs of last year just with yeah. Korean voices. Okay. So it's kind of it's kind of hip hop. Yeah, it's a it's kind of I would say it's like electronic pop music. I'm not into I'm not into that. I it's like some of them can be really catchy, but just it, as a general style, I mean it, you're just like talking and you've got some beat going on in the back. You're such now, an old man. I I, I well That's I such a like a old man uh, It's a, a very old man, man, response. man response, which is fine. I don't really care. Um, you probably know more about K-pop than I do by magnitudes. Why would you say that? Have I? Well, because you know. Because why? You just you seem you're like more a K-pop person. You're more in tune to the kids. What's what's hot on the web? That's true. You and, didn't just learn whatnot. about Logan Paul. Yeah. Um, which is you are still very. I'm dabbing on haters that. nonstop, still- and it's. It's working well for me right you're now. Still very excited about Logan <laughs> really Paul. Really excited for it. Which is making me think you're a Logan Paul fan. Oh, did you watch that video I showed you? Uh, about the the, the hero? hero? No, I I was telling uh, telling Julia about it though. H- hilarious. Um, but this K-pop thing, I've heard stories. I've heard rumblings in the music industry about them grooming these groups, basically. Oh, for sure. Like, I mean, it, it's like Ron Perlman times 100 mm-hmm. and, you know, like almost detrimental to these. I mean, not almost like probably really damaging for these kids. I but. would I would think that newer groups like I, I would assume like this black pink group, uh, they probably represent like a later revision of that. I think initially, I mean, I guess I do more know a lot more about K-pop. <laughs> I see. I knew it. I knew if it. If you look back at like historically, like K-pop and like J-pop, which is like Japanese pop music, um, there were a lot of very the same girl groups coming out where they looked the same and they sounded the same. You know what I mean? Like there was just kind of a rinse and repeat kind of ideal with them. Um, where I will say, it seems like modern groups are are at least developed around individuality and style in a way that wasn't prevalent before. Which leads me to believe that they're not as formulaic as they once were, but uh, I don't know that much about it. I can't really say. It's just it's such a m- music is such a artistic expression traditionally, and I think it's like become so commercialized now that there are formulas that you can kind of plug and play. And but I don't think here's your song. I don't think that's unique to the now. You know? I know I'm not saying it. I don't think it is either. I, I think it's getting more and more that way because artists are now are getting less and less money. You've seen the articles recently about streaming services and how much these artists get. I mean, it's like pennies. Yeah, I just think it's more and more viable. I, I think it's it's more lucrative to be more uh, formulaic now. And I think that's probably why yeah. it seems so much worse now. But, you know, yeah, the Beatles were formulaic in a lot of ways. Oh, yeah, yeah. As I'm much not as saying... I, I love the Beatles. Yeah, yeah. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, and I, I agree. I mean, like, music is formulaic. Yeah. It's mathematic. Like, there are... Metallica, who I also love, their songs are exactly the same. Like, it's yeah. a clear cut, grow your hair out, play E minor, G, D, and... Same few you know, chords. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's there's only so many, only so many ways you can do it, but, you know, it's intro riff and chorus, or, you know, intro riff, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge. You yeah. Know. It's the same kind of formula. And that that's not really what I meant by formulaic. It was more, um, you know, like the actual 
production of yeah, it. Cult- <laughs> yeah, culturally formulaic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and that brings up kind of, uh, I, I don't want to necessarily get into this, but I thought it was kind of interesting and, and connects to this like genre crossing over. Because I, I hear that song and it sounds like hip hop, but they're four little girls from Korea. It's, you know, that's cool. They're young, they're young women. Yeah, there's nothing that can you say. You have to call them little girls. Well, they're s- small and girls. I don't, I don't know. They're young women. Young women, fine, whatever. Uh, so this is from, this is on many, many articles written on this, but the one I just pulled up is from Vulture. Uh, I don't know necessarily what their deal is, but. Um, they're a bird. The <laughs> circling over us. Um, recent article. So this happened a couple of days ago. Billboard defends Little Nas X's Old Town Road removal from country charts. So I don't know if I am pronouncing that completely wrong, but Little Nas X. He's the black country singer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's right either. I, I'm not hip. Yeah. I'm, I'm not part of I'm it. I'm reading it. I, I, I was, uh, I've heard this song um, briefly, and I'm, but, but just, you know, it made me think of this. So I've actually never heard the song, but I've seen this. Yeah, this it's very much rap. I mean, it's hip hop, but it is just the content happens to be country. But it brought up this this in, interesting point, like what is country music, and then uh, you know what is music in general. Um, maybe don't fill your cowboy hats with concrete and fling them through the glass doors of Billboard's headquarters just yet, y'all. Which is an interesting way of starting an article. After receiving widespread criticism for removing Lil Nas X's smash country rap hit "Old Town Road" from the country charts due to the song not embracing enough elements of today's country music in its current version, Billboard is both defending the decision and implying it could be overturned. In a new statement to Rolling Stone, the publication asserted that while the original Old Town Road and its subsequent Billy Ray Cyrus remix continue to climb the Hot 100 charts, are uh, there are ongoing discussions if they should be classified as country too. Billboard offers uh, category-specific charts simply as a tool for people in the music business to better gauge the success of songs relative to others in a given format. We are oftentimes faced with difficult categorization choices, the statement read. And then they... they Kind of go on to talk more about categorization, but oh my god, talk about open up a Pandora's box, dude! Like, fa- like fascinating discussion. Yeah, I'm amazed. I'm amazed this is even. I mean, I'm amazed for one the billboards like touching this. You know what I mean? Because it's so uh, it's such a sensitive issue. You know, at least in the current climate, right? Like, because it has tones of racism and tones of like, like just kind of i don't even want to call it racism when you talk about country music right like like kind of redneckifying and like like what does it mean to be country yeah and um i think genres are music genres are pretty stupid i think country as a genre is kind of fake because it's based on it's really more cultural than it is about the music itself you know a lot of country is pop like shania twain was a country singer but she was also like on MTV. Oh, dude. T1, yeah. What is it? TL, TRL. Yeah. TRL. TRL. Yeah. yeah. It was like one of the, you know, a top 10 Absolutely, Billboard pop man. song. Right. And so it's like, like, what is, what is country? Why? Exactly. Do, and why do you guys need to cordon off your bad music in its own place? So and, no one judges. And that's what I, music? yeah, that's why I thought it was so interesting. Like Taylor Swift is a good example. Like she's supposed to be a country star, but she's clearly not. And I can't remember what song, but there was like a song of hers that was a pop hit. And then they added the same song. They added a banjo in the background and played it on the country music. You know, it's like, that's like, okay, so how much banjo do you need? How much slide rule guitar do you need? Yeah, you gotta have that steel guitar. You're not steel country. guitar is freaking money. Um, you know, like, what? Do you, do you need to mention your dog, uh, whiskey, and your girlfriend's footprints on the dashboard? Like, wh- at what you know, what constitutes a country song is really funny. And then also, I mean, all the other genres I think are fair game too. Like what's a rap song? Like, is Mm -hmm. that, is that black pink song, a rap song? Is that hip hop? It has all of the makings of a hip hop song. I feel that same way. Like even like post Malone songs. I like post Malone. A lot of his songs don't have rapping in them. Right. Drake songs. A lot of Drake songs aren't heavy in rap, but it's rap music. Right. And it's just like, well, it's kind of just hip hop. Like what, why are we so quick to define? Like, why do we need to kind of create these 
these music silos and then really it's so that everyone can be the number one song right because the number one song sells like it's more yeah if if you can't be the number one country song like if it's just number one in pop music then you're not gonna have that like fandom right built around it where they're like i gotta i gotta buy it or i gotta advertise to it you know what i mean yeah it's it's like the these styles are just made just so uh just so they can have them as like revenue verticals, I feel like. Yeah, well, and it's it's it makes sense to gauge the popularity. Like Billboard said, like it's for the industry, really. It's not really for us because we don't care. It's not like we're gonna go run out and go like you know let's what's on the top of the charts. Let's go buy these songs this week. You know, it's really a reflection. It's it's like an industry insider ranking of yeah, but sales. Even that, like I don't really. I mean, I guess I buy it as far. I would buy that if like discovery was set up that way, right? Like if it was, if it was like, you know, categories in the store, right? If it was like, we've got our groceries and our coffees and, you know, or the sundries and plastic goods and paper goods, you know what I mean? Like if it was so, so clearly delineated, but I feel like they keep it ambiguous and let things cross back and forth and don't have clear definitions in the categorizations because they want um they want to have like you know here's 10 hot country stars for ad revenue for well album sales if that was still a thing you know for spotify playlists for you know what i mean for discovery and here's 10 hot rap artists right when some of those songs aren't even rap and here's 10 hot r&b songs for you know if you like R and B, right? Like, like I feel like it's far more aimed at um, creating silos for consumers to participate in, um, because I I don't know. I just feel like there's this belief that if we if you just gave people everything or let them define things they liked, you know what I mean? I think it's a way to tell people what they like more than it's a way for an industry to be like, because the industry knows they know who's making what, you know what I mean? Like insiders, they don't need country charts to tell them like who's making good rock songs or whatever right like um but just from a practical standpoint it's hard to to have just hear the top 10 songs because not all of those songs are going to be top 10s for everybody the mm-hmm. country fan is different than the hip-hop fan there's crossover and there's some you know cross-pollinization and stuff but it's not typically the same crew yeah i just think the country fan um, the reason the country fan is different than the rock fan is because they uh, identify with um, with kind of the culture of country that has been built up. You know what I mean? Like it's far. That's what I mean. It's far more about being told like this is country. This is what you like this week than it is about like I just love this music. You know what I mean? Because I think. Um, the best music is rarely in the top 10 anyway. You know what I mean? The best music is rarely clearly delineated as, you know, my favorite group when I was really into music and I was growing up and I was playing music, my favorite group was Radiohead, right? Like, I guess you would have called them alternative back in the day, but they were clearly a non-genre band, right? They were electronic music. All their albums are different kinds of music. And, um, and sure, they had some hits. None of my favorite songs are their hits. None of my favorite albums, you know, are their mm-hmm. best like albums. And um, and I guess it helped for discovery, I guess, but I didn't really find them that way. But, you know, it's, it's so people who don't care about what they listen to but want to be, want to have an identity to that music. I guess, but there's some, I mean, just... Like, if, okay, you like Radiohead. If someone came up to you and said, hey, I got this really good... Ba- like, you like Radiohead? You're going to love The Cure. Listen to these guys. Like, they came up before. They're the really cure. they're really good. Like, they're kind of... I don't. Versus, like, hey, you like Radiohead? Well, here's, um, you know, uh, Wu-Tang Clan. You know, you, I love the, Wu-Tang Clan. <laughs> but, like, the, the... Fine. You know, but... You know what I mean? Like, there's differences in, like, oh, you like that kind of music? Well, here, check check this stuff out. That's similar. I feel it's like Radiohead has, but that's what I mean. That's, that's what I'm saying. I feel like Radiohead has more similarities to the Wu Tang Clan than they do to new wave music. That's which is fine, right? But, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, genres are only there 
for simple music for simple people. Yeah. <laughs> you know well, I mean? yeah, and, and exactly. And The Cure and Radiohead and Wu-Tang Clan and... Um, you know what other I can't. Yeah, even, and these like, aren't obscure bands. I'm talking. They're about. not obscure, but they're also not straight down the middle of something. It's yeah. not like okay, I like Black well, Street, so little... I'm down R and B. I like you know uh, Faith Hill. I'm down country. Like it's it's those are a little bit on the edges of the their fringe, whatever they are. Yeah, but I mean that's but that's what yeah, I guess I, you're right. But that's what I'm saying. Like that's why they're being so. You know, that's why Taylor Swift isn't country. She's like pop, right? Because it's like we got to we got to pick a side for her. She needs to be on a team. Like she can't just make like some of her songs can't fall into country and some of her fo- songs fall into pop hits or top 40 or whatever, right? Because cuz then no one would people would be like confused, right? As like who they're like I'm not a Taylor Swift fan. She's not country, but now she is country. She's a fake. You know what I mean? Like like the the cultural identity is I feel like the biggest part of these genres, right? And I feel like that's why people are afraid of this guy, right? Like cuz he's country rapping with Billy Ray Cyrus on the song and they're like that's not country, right? But it's like what if it is? Well, what I think they're <laughs> I like, well, yeah, but I think their their contention is like you know the argument for it being country is well, what what are what aspects of it are not country or what are like Mm -hmm. he's talking about a country road you know like the content is country yeah but the music is hip-hop he's not the first person to rap country rap you know but what but what does like do you need one banjo in there do you need one fiddle what happens if you make a song that sounds like jerry reed but you've got jay-z rapping over it is that country johnny cash was rapping (laughs) yeah i mean that guy hardly said i know yeah you know like I mean, honestly, I'm not usually the guy to say this, but it's because he's black. Like, that's the issue. <laughs> he is the... Oh, well, I don't know. No, if he was a white dude in a cowboy hat sitting on the back of a Silverado... I don't know, being man. Like, be taught, rapping about his country road, they would embrace it as... Like, Kid Rock. They I would don't embrace know. it as some country song. I, I'm not going to go that far it's to just truth. say that it's straight it's up racist. Truth. Because Darius Rucker, he's like... He's committed himself to the the culture of it. it doesn't matter if he's black or not, but well, he's no, but more he's country because he's not pushing the the envelope of what, like you know what I mean. He's not a fringe country artist, right? Like, like that's what I mean. Like, and I'm not saying this is some like conspiracy against like you know Black America as a whole, right? All I'm saying is if he was a white kid rapping about you know doing country raps with Billy Ray Cyrus. It would be on the country charts, and no one would give a shit. But it's Billboard. I'm. D- it's Billboard so? that's making. It's not country music. That's it's what, Billboard. But that's why I'm saying that. That goes back right to the beginning about why charts aren't for the industry. They're a way to tell people what to like, and you put this in the country charts because it made sense. And there's backlash because country fans aren't necessarily fans of black rappers, right? And then they're like, it's not country anymore. Don't worry. Well, I don't know if there is right? backlash. They're like, no, it's not country. Don't worry. Like, yeah, but I don't know if there, I, I can't say if there was backlash. I'm sure there was. I'm not saying that there for sure categorically wasn't. I'm sure there was backlash because it does exist. But I'm just saying, I don't think Billboard's choice to to remove it from the country charge was based off of like enormous amount of backlash. I think they thought it would hurt sales. I think they thought. Of what? But they're. Of they're, their product. But they're. Their product yeah. is categorizing the hottest music in a given category. No, their product is expertise. Right. And, the, and by having backlash against their list, against what is defined as country, they seem wrong. They seem like they're not experts. Right. And if they don't have, if they don't speak from a voice of, of pure knowledge, then they're useless. Right. Like the moment... That billboard is like you don't even you know the moment you can say like they don't even like genre define correct. Yeah, but the song, so but, but the song is not country. I've it's, never heard the song. It's not country. It, you, if you hear it, it is a rap song that the he's rapping about stuff that's in the country. I'm gonna listen right now. I gotta hear this. I gotta hear this. Little what's his name? A uh, Lil Nas X. I can only listen for a second. Old Town Road? Yeah. Do I show us in a remix? Uh, just like the regular song. Just like the standard. doesn't have to be the remix. Old Town Road. 
These are all the remix. I'm gonna skip forward since I. Oh, this dude's just talking. He's pretty country though. All these are. Commercial. I hate you too. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it so much. Sorry, you guys have to listen to me waiting to hear this song. Well, we could cut it out too. I just need to decide if this is racism or not. Yeah, I say we can cut it out, but that means I have to cut it out. All right. Just a little snippy snip. This song. Is this the Billy Ray Cyrus one? No. This song. Yeah. Right. Like, it's just a rap song that they're talking about horses. But it's also very country. I think there's definitely been country songs. I mean, we're splitting honestly, hairs, but it's a rap song. There's no musical element that has traditionally classified music as country or not. It's not necessarily the topic. It's the music. It's the composition of the instruments. I just think a lot of country music is rap. So I think a lot of music is rap. Yeah. I think a lot of country music is pop. Oh, that I mean, country music is pop. You know what I like? That's what I mean. That's why I'm saying. That's why my whole point going back, despite the racism and all the other stuff I've said, is these genres are stupid and they need to go away because they're they're just bad. Well, I'm going to be on the stance that I think genres is a is a simplistic. Arguably oversimplistic way of categorizing similar music for people's tastes. That's all. But that's point so, counterpoint. <laughs> then just don't make charts about them. That's what I'm saying. Don't have like, don't define things you can't define. As, I well, it's getting blurrier. I don't mind as as a Spotify user. It's like here's our favorite redneck country music for all you redneck and guys out there, right? Like. That's fine. You're just making playlists for people to listen to. Like, I, I'm not saying that that's wrong. And I'm not saying having simple definitions for people to find, um, you know, hot rap. You know, But if you're they, into Florida Georgia Line, you're probably not into that. Or you may not be into that. Like, there's a high degree of like... According that, to Billboard, people were into it. Except the people that... It was different think, people. Think, no, except for people that think that they decide, they know what country is. Right? Like, that's what I mean. Billboard had it in there for a while and then took it out. You know, like, that's the thing. Like, like it found its way into country. So who cares? Like, well, I just think it was probably because it didn't get it did not like the numbers came back and they were not high on the actual you know, country. You station. know, that's not the truth. Dude, I, I just don't think it had anything to do with the race at all. I think that just that's a rap song that the guy's talking about horses. <laughs> They're like, ah, OK, yeah, this really is a country. This is just a rap song with, you know, all the week I'm going to send you billboard. No, and I'm not saying I'm not saying that putting country s- songs that are rap songs, putting a banjo at the end, you know, behind that doesn't make it e- any more or less what it is or isn't. No, I mean, it is rap. It's a rap song. Yeah, that's fine. I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying a lot of country songs are dumb shit like that. I agree. And I'm not a country fan. I am coming at this from a, like, I am more a fan of hip-hop than I am of country. The only re- the only issue people have with that song isn't that it's too rap or that it's got a rap background. It's that that dude don't seem like a country dude. You know what I mean? Like, that's the issue. Dude, I don't think so. So I you're th- telling me there's no rap songs on the, that have ever been on the country charts? No, I am saying that that particular song does not have like billboard says does not have enough elements in it to classify it as a country song and i'm saying other country songs have been as not country as that song and have happily lived well i would need to i would need to see hear an example of it because just warn me i would have brought a hundred and we can like I, i would love to hear some because i don't think in like looking at that song in a vacuum not enough as and you can argue whether or not it it does have enough elements in it 
I don't think it really matters. I don't really care, but I can see their stance of that is a rap song. Mm -hmm. That's a hip hop song. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't know if having Billy Ray Cyrus with a, you know, a steel guitar in the background is going to, you know, is enough to make it a country song rather than just a hip hop song featuring a country artist. And it's likely that that, that line will get blurred you know, more because I mean, there, there's a reason why Darius Rucker wanted to be a country song, you know, country artist, because there's a lot of money in it. So sad. That's sad. fake news. Yeah. <laughs> it's a hot topic though. It was a hot topic. For, for just like a little toss in there. That was a good one. Yeah. That, that was, really that was pretty good. Got sparks. Do we could go, I could go on longer with that. Cause I, I think know. we're on, we're on enough opposite sides of that where we could, we could trade jabs and I think it would be productive. Yeah. I don't think we're just on, that's what I mean. I don't think we're on opposite sides of it per se. I just think we both, I think we, we're far enough apart where, where we could at least come to an agreement. Yeah, I we're, mean, we, I, we're differing opinions, but we could we could still get to a okay. This this looks good. The problem is, I would need to do research. Yeah, I would really because I think that there have been a lot of, I mean, <clears throat> anecdotally, just in my head, I think yeah. that there have been a lot of country songs. Yeah, like Cotton Eye Joe. You know, is that a country song? Um, I mean, that's a great example. I that was not what I was thinking of, but that is a good example <laughs> of a song that is hardly singing. <laughs> and and it's got my joke electronic, right? a long time like, ago. It's yeah. really EDM in some ways. Yeah. Um, but but try. I am looking at it more in the vacuum of that one particular song. Like if you're just critiquing that song without precedent, a, you can't in a vacuum. No, but I think That's they're. Tr- I think they're trying to, and I think if you go, but well, why? that one wasn't, or that one was, then you're going to be you're going to be in a nonstop spiral. But that's why it's, that's why it's so strange to me. Or that's why it's, it's, um, it's suspect to me, right? Well, Taylor Swift gets the benefit of being a country star because she came from a country background. Like she had the cowboy boots and the acoustic where's, guitar. Where's little well, that's what I'm saying. From? That's what I'm saying. I don't know, but I mean, if he's from the South, you know what I mean? I'm not saying from, South. I'm just saying like, I'm just saying like, that, but that's the image point. wise. But what is the, that? That's exactly the point. What is the country image? It's it's a it's a white person in cowboy boots. I don't think I think you're I think you're no, minimalizing it, the 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 or you're you're overblowing the, the skin color thing. Fine. It's not a white. Per, it's a person in cowboy boots with some Wrangler jeans on and a big belt buckle and a flannel shirt, right? Yeah, right. Like that's what country is. Yeah. So if that person starts making hip hop music, it's going to take longer for them to be recognized as a hip hop star as it is the same in the other direction. If Eminem is now all of a sudden making country rap, it's going to take just as long for him to be recognized as a country artist as as little little Nas X. I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily think that's true. I mean, I think people cross genres all the time, and it's not really an yeah, issue. Yeah, but but it's going to take longer. the 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 switchover is going to take longer, depending on how much into the other genre you were. No, I just don't think that there's a defined length of time to be within. Like that's what I. If you, yeah, it's different for every case. Every single case is different. It depends look, on the song. If you look the part, it's fine. That's what I mean. I guess I am too hung up on race, right? Because it's not just race. That's the that's the problem with it. You know what I mean? That makes him problematic as a country song, right? It's it's kind of it's that he's not Darius Rucker. You know what I mean? He's not doesn't have his country hat on and his acoustic guitar slung over his back and a harmonica in his right. pocket. But, right. But but it took him a long it took him time to get recognized as a country artist. It wasn't like oh. Uh, the black dude from Hootie and the Blowfish now has a harmonica. He, that's he's Ho- one of us. That's because Hootie and the Blowfish was bad, and he's bad. But yeah, but I'm just saying but it took it took a while for go like have that you heard guy. Of these country songs? Yeah, they're very country. They're very bad. It, but they're very country. They're bad music. I mean, Hootie and the Blowfish. Don't get me wrong. I sang a lot of Hootie and the Blowfish songs in my teenage years. I had an acoustic guitar. I wanted to be Darius Rucker. <laughs> I was singing "Let Her Go." Right, like. I was all in on Hootie and the Blowfish. Those songs are bad, and his country. <laughs> yeah, songs they are. are they bad are bad, too. but that's not the argument. It says, "Is it country or not?" Yeah, and I just, think you can make anything can be whatever you 
want it to be. Exactly. So why is this? Why can this not be country? Because it's going to take time. Because it's not no. just a switch. You can't just say you can't. It was Eminem a, can't just make they, a country they flip song. The switch to turn it off. Yeah, but country music. Or Eminem can't just make a country song and now all of a sudden be a country artist and be invited to all the CMA stuff and be you on. You don't got to invite this kid to the CMAs. I mean, you just had to not pull him off a chart. Like, you know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. But he's still on a chart. He's on the more appropriate chart for that song, in their opinion. That's it. It's just, we're not going to categorize well, they, it here. But, we're going to categorize it here for this song at this moment in this configuration. They made it. I mean, that, but that's what I'm saying. They made a choice initially. It it worked on a chart, and for whatever reason, now it's like, yeah, it's not. It's not country music. When clearly they thought it was country music. You know what I mean? That's yeah, but I think it's in their right to. I mean, they they get oh, to change their mind. Just like they get, they can change their mind if he goes, if you know, if they make an, a remix where they they add that steel guitar in, and they're well, like, they got a Billy Ray Cyrus one. Put put that in there. I like, I don't I don't know. I I I don't know. But it takes time. It's it takes time to be recognized as a different genre. I think this is so much more about social backlash than it is about any type. Of, I would like, be curious. I would correctly, honestly correctly yeah. defining a song. I would be genuinely curious about that because I think that that it is probably lower than you might think. No, I mean I don't think. I think the amount of backlash was probably small. I think in general. Um, the backlash that these companies are scared of is usually quite focused and quite small. Yeah, I just and don't they know. they react to it. I, Otherwise, they just never would have gotten off their asses to change it. They weren't sitting at home or sitting at Billboard Inc., right? And they're listening to the top 100s being like, oh, we just listened to yeah. the country charts. And this one just didn't seem so country. So so we should review it in the, but in look, the top chart meeting today. They, right? like, like <laughs> exactly like you said, they're... Their product is their expertise in the music. Yeah. So they take this song and they they classify it as country. They get the data coming back that says, okay, in country settings, this song is way lower. In hip hop rap settings, this song is a lot higher. We may have miscategorized this based on the theme of that song. And it is really not country because the country audience is not taking to it. Yeah, let's relook at this. Yeah, you're right. It really isn't like he's talking about horses, but this is a rap song. Let's take it off country. Let's put it in hip hop. We're gonna relook at this. You're you're saying that their initial knee jerk reaction was correct, and but now didn't work, and that they can't do that. They have to stick with their original classification. I don't think they have to. I just I would be interested to see how often they re genre songs. I yeah, think, I would be too. I think that's yeah. a that's a tidbit that I think would be. The most telling in all of this. Maybe. Maybe. I think it would, it would be interesting to see how often it happens, but also it, how often is our genre or music, how often are songs that on the border? Uh, like every time. Like every time. Dude, I think as an artist, you have to pick a genre in order to be marketable to a specific type of person. But that goes back to what I was saying. You know, that goes back to what I was saying about these charts being not an industry in not what they said. Like that to me, them saying like, oh, these, these, uh, I don't, char- billboard is not driving that billboard is reflecting that people yeah. are buying based off of genres. Billboard is saying we're going to, we're, we're te- keeping tabs of those buying habits. And then you're saying, yeah, but that's what I mean. Like, they're just displaying the, the the graphic, right? They're just telling you what's happened, and they tell you this kid sold a bunch on rap albums, and then they redefine it. But that yeah. not on rap albums; it's just an album that's or on I mean. rap radio. Like he, like yeah. But I think they're not they're not trying but to you don't push know an agenda. You don't know where it was played. I I'm not saying I know. I'm saying that they. I am assuming that their expertise is telling them that this is not getting play on country radio. Now there can be cultural racist whatever reasons for that and it's probably the case but i think it's more of the fact that if that was playing on the country radio station with chris stapleton and florida georgia lion on either side it would be way out of place and people would not like it i bet you country people love that shit i don't know i bet you they love i don't know but i bet you that was not part of their decision making it was they're looking at where it was played and how much you know this it was it was put in the the country section, and people didn't buy it. 
or it was played on country radio and people didn't like it and you know they they took it off they took it out of the rotation they're not saying yeah you know what this is um you know we don't like this us at billboard here the you know purveyors of music taste uh deem this to be rap music no. this this guy drives a G-Wagon Mercedes with huge rims. He's not country enough. No, I, I don't think that that's what they did either. I think they said, oh, some people are saying some shit. Let's move this. I Dude, I think it's, I think it's, I think it's numbers. I, don't think they, I think they had apprehension in doing it because of the backlash, because they didn't want to look like they were being racist. I think the data 100% supported that classifying itself based off of taste and requests and whatever whatever metrics they use to classify music that it was clearly not a country song. I don't know. I think it's as country as country is. I think it's as country as country gets. And you know what? Fuck everybody else. It yeah. It doesn't agree with me. Look, How about that? More to them. I think it's great. I think a, a rap song with, with country themes is a, is an awesome idea. I actually like the song. Yeah. I, I'll say this. <laughs> I my, dig it. I think it's my a cool final song. take. And we're like almost out of time for the day. Yeah, I'll be honest. We've been talking about this <laughs> stupid song for so long. If you're not ready for black kids in to sing rap country trap country songs, you better fucking buckle your pants because <laughs> it's coming right. Especially after yeah. this, dude. It's cool. It's, it's a cool song. Yeah, it's especially a cool song. after this, like. They're coming for your country charts. Yeah, well, and, and I mean, again, don't make it just black or white thing because I think Post Malone and Eminem and oh, I yeah, mean, like I agree. any of these these I, white hip hop artists, like they're they're as much. And you're right. I should have said black. It's cultural. Yeah. Right. I think it's about culture. I think right. I think Post Malone is treated as, you know, what if he made a country song, would also be ostracized. Yeah. Right. Oh, but he's ostracized in hip hop for he's being very white. very ostracized in hip hop, but. Um, Regardless, so was Eminem. I mean, it's just like he's a white rapper. Like, you know, his whole thing was why can't I just want to be a rapper? Regardless, trap country's coming now. It's coming for you. Okay, so let's. And I kind of like. I mean, if we're really, really going long, but I think this is an important. I think this. I is think we good, should save it for next week. I think. Um, I think that we should save this for next week. So <laughs> sorry, we we're just we're already at an hour. Yeah, perfect timing. The decision was made. Perfect timing for us. Um. Bill, it was fun talking to you about Little Nas X. That was some hot takes, dude. The country Road. I yeah. Was, it was a good I time. was not expecting that. That was something that that was an organic rabbit hole we went down. Yeah. The Black Pink thing, I thought it'd be funny because you didn't know anything about K-pop. Yep. But it really rolled into some uh, interesting talks about Little It pays Nas to X. pay attention to the news every it once in a while, you know? It does pay attention to the news. Get some hot stuff. Uh, this is Tech Yeah, episode 27. I appreciate you guys listening. 28. 20. Right. I don't remember. Whatever. It's I something. Think it it's under 30. Uh, if you want to reach out to us, techyapodcast at gmail.com. Techyapodcast on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, Bill, I really appreciate you. Uh, what mm. did I? What was I saying? What? Bill, I really appreciate you. I appreciate you today. as well, Tony. Yeah, and I love you guys out there. And thank you for listening. Tech yeah. Bye.